good morning students so this class i would like to highlight some questions so students please be with a textbook and pencil and follow me and mark the questions and this may help you to learn clearly fine so this is the second chapter kingdom animalia clear so kingdom animalia first paragraph last line okay so there is they said they include which means kingdom animalia includes 35 phyla underline among this 11 are considered as a major phyla that 11 we know right then almost 99 percentage animals are vertebrate among this 11 99 percentage are invertebrates right so that also you can underline right then come to the second paragraph basis of classification here on book pack question is asked it is a question number 23 okay the question is what are the common character of most of these animals okay so mark it from the fourth line arrangement of cell layer the level of organization nature of coelom the presence or absence of segmentation notochord and this organization of organ system so this is common for most of these animals right okay next is title is cellular level of organization if this is present in sponges so sponges underline and the next question, the sponges consist of two layers, outer layer as well as the inner layer. The outer layer is pinacocytes and the inner layer is guanocytes. Then you mark this functions of each. So pinacocytes, platelet-like cells that is maintaining the structure and shape of the sponge. Okay. Then guanocyte is responsible for respiratory as well as the digestive function. Have you marked? Okay. Come to the next one, tissue level of organization. There it is present in nidarians that you mark. Okay. Then organ level of organization is present in phylum platyhelminthes that you can underline, right? Then come to the next one, organ system level of organization is present in flatworms, nematodes, annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms as well as chordates. Clear? Okay. And the same paragraph last lesson, there one question is given as the comparison of incomplete digestive system as well as the complete digestive system right so mark it from here the digestive system of platyhelminthes has the only single opening to the exterior which serves as both as and mouth as well as anus it is incomplete digestive system and complete digestive system ascalminthes to chordates all animals have complete digestive system with the two openings the mouth and the anus mark from here to here is it clear okay then come to the next one next paragraph another one question is there it is a book pack question question number 25 okay compare open circulatory system as well as the closed circulatory system start from the second line and end here okay then uh, it means it's open circulation means there is no cap blood capillaries closed circulation means the blood capillaries will be there blood vessels and the capillaries will be available right okay next one is the diploplastic and triploplastic organization there two question is given in the second paragraph what is diploplastic animals are given so animals which have cellular arrangement for two embryonic layer that is ectoderm and endoderm it is diploplastic animals right and the third paragraph they said what is triploplastic animals animals in which the developing embryo has a three germinal layer is called triploplastic animals ectoderm endoderm mesoderm and in the bracket also please you mark it because the organs which is developing from each is also mentioned there understand okay then come to the next title it's a patterns of symmetry the first three lines we can mark it as a definition for symmetry symmetry is a body arrangement in which the parts lie on opposite sides are uh, identical right and there is five symmetries there the first one is asymmetrical from the third line onwards you mark the simplest body plan is seen in the sponges they do not display symmetry is called asymmetrical example sponges underline and snail underline okay come to the second paragraph fourth line radial symmetry when any plane passing through the central axis of the body divides an organism into two identical parts is called radial symmetry clear mark it then come to the last line fourth line four lines triploplastic animals like echinoderms have five planes of symmetry and so pendomerous radial symmetry okay then and the next symmetry is bilateral symmetry sorry biradially symmetrical animals which possess two pairs of symmetrical sides are said to be biradially symmetrical example uh, tenophores phylum tenophores and example we could say home jellies okay home jellyfish and the next symmetry is bilateral symmetry the next paragraph animals which have two similar halves on either side of the central plane shows bilateral symmetry understand so this is the five types of symmetry asymmetry radial symmetry pentamerous radial symmetry then 
biradial symmetrical as well as, as well as bilateral symmetry. Understand? Come to the next title, it is coelom. So there is three coelom is there, a coelomate, pseudo seal as well as u coelom, right? So the first one is a coelom. So there we can see the a coelomate. Second paragraph, animals which, which do not possess any body cavities are called a coelomate. Example, flatworms. Okay. Come to the next one, pseudo seal. So begin from this first, second, third paragraph beginning and end with the pseudo coelomate fluid. Example, round worm. Are you following me? Okay, next one, u zilam. u zilam also begin from here. Third paragraph, sorry, fourth paragraph. u zilam or true zilam is a fluid filled cavity that de develops within the mesodermal layer. Okay, so this is as u zilamates, right? Okay. The next one is, they said, this u zilamate is again classified as two more zilams. That is, chiso zilam as well as this entero zilam. Chiso zilam and Enterocelum, right? U zilamate is classified as chisocelum and enterocelum as per the formation of this coelom. Okay. Chisocelumate means in these animals the body cavity is formed by splitting of mesoderm. But here they said it is formed from this mesodermal pouches of orchidron. So it is formed from the pouches. But here it is splitting of mesoderm. This is an important question and book pack question, question number 26. Have you marked? Okay. And come to the next one, segmentation and notochord. There one question is given in the first paragraph, that is what is metamerism. So in some animals, the body is internally and ex externally and internally divided into series of repeated units called segments with the serial repetition of some organs is called metamerism market. Okay, come to the second paragraph. Animals which possess notochord at any stage of their development are called chordates. So this is one of the book pack question. The question is, and uh, which character is obtained by an or um, chordate during any stage of its development. Which character is obtained by an chordate during its any stages of its development is which character or which feature is obtained? That is notochord. Okay, it is question number 24. Okay, and again this chordate is classified into two based on the presence or absence of this notochord that is and chordates as well as non chordates. Clear? Then the next title is classification of kingdom animalia. So kingdom animalia is classified as two sub kingdoms that is parasova as well as eumetasova. Then eumetasova is again classified as radiator as well as bilateria. Okay. Then so here one flow chart is given. If you go through this flow chart it is clearly mentioned there. You could understand this clearly about the classification of kingdom animalia. Right. Okay. Then here another one. The bilateria is again classified as two divisions, that is prostomia as well as deuterostomia. Okay, so prostomia means this is it, and uh, protostomia includes this eumetasovans, in which it is a eumetasova because it is a true zealum is there, and eumetasovans, in which the embryonic blastopore develop into mouth. So, the from the embryo only all the organs used to develop, am I right? But here they said from the embryo the blastopore region is developing as a mouth. Understand? And here example also they said acelamates, pseudocelamates as well as chisocelamates. Okay. Then deuterostomia means they said and this is a eumetasovians but here they said anus is formed from this or near the blastopore. Their mouth is formed from the blastopore. Here anus is formed from the blastopore otherwise near from the blastopore. Understand? So this difference also they could ask. Difference between this protostomia as well as the deuterostomia. Then in this, this same paragraph last two line listen. They have a true zealum called enterocele formed from the archenteron. See it is a book pack question. Question number 27. The question is which part is formed from this archenteron? Okay. So deuterostomia is this true zealum called an enterocele and this is formed from the archenteron. So, mark it, question number 27. Alright. Then come to the next title. It is as non chordates Among the non chordates the first one is phylum porifera. So, listen here. So, these areas, if they ask any one phyma questions from this phylum porifera, you have to write almost all, every point. Right. But here I am just, I will notice or mark this some uh, one words, otherwise, otherwise two mark and the three mark question only I could highlight now. But if it is asked as a phyma question, you have to come write this entire point. Do you get me? 
okay now listen so this is one of the very important system in this porifera that is canal system right the water is transportation inside the body okay so the water is moving inside through the hole or pore it is called ostia and the central cavity is called spongoseal underline then the water is coming out through the opening called osculum have you noticed so underline these things then what is the use of this transportation system that is in the second line next line they said it is useful for food gathering circulation respiration as well as the removal of the waste okay so that also you mark this is the use of canal system then come to this next point this is a book back question question number 22 mark it question number 22 the body is supported by a skeleton made up of calcareous and siliceous spicules or spongins the question is why the spicules and the spongin is important for pylon porifera because it is giving support or skeletal support to this body that's why it is important understand okay that you mark as question number 22 okay and come to the last point the larva of this phylum porifera is parenchymula as well as ambiblastula okay fine and the next phylum is nidaria so nidaria one of the special character is there in the nidaria because the name nidaria is derived from nidocytes or nidoblasts with stinging cells or nematocyst on the tentacles this is a important character underline the special cells nidocytes or the nidoblast is present in the tentacle of these organisms okay then what is the use of this one next line nidoblasts are used for anchoring defense as well as to capture this prey that also you mark uses okay and come to the next one the mouth of this organism is called hypostom okay mark it then another one very important character nidarians uh, consist of two body forms one is polyp another one is medusa polyp in cylindrical form another one medusa is is umbrella form so this also they can ask us a two mark question or three mark question differentiate polyp and medusa okay so it's a two forms of this nidarians polyp is a cylindrical in shape medusa is is umbrella shape and polyp is a sessile one because it is fixing in one particular place but umbrella is is umbrella shape medusa is a free swimming one understand example also you can say clear then come to the next paragraph there one question is asked metagenesis metagenesis means so these organisms two form is there polyp form as well as medusa form so both will be formed alternatively in one complete life cycle that is called metagenesis understand first polyp stage will be there then it will produce a medusa stage again medusa stage will produce a polyp stage during the life cycle these th those things we have explained during the class do you remember okay so the nidarians which exist in both the forms also exhibit an exhibit alternation of generation in their life cycle is called metagenesis okay and come to the last point the larva of this phylum nidaria is planula larva okay okay then phylum tenophora okay so tenophora one point they said and they have eight external rows of ciliated homoplates that's why this is known as the home jellies it is one of the nature of this organism okay then here and this is a commonly called as it is home jellies or sea walnuts also okay then another one important character is there for this phylum that is bioluminescence bioluminescence in the means uh, the ability of the living organisms to emit light is called it is bioluminescence so this is one of the important character of this chain of force okay and here also another one special cell is there for this organisms that is called it is lasso cells or coloblast underline coloblast which is useful for and uh, food capture understand so this point you mark then come to the last point the larva of this phylum is called sidip larva okay then come to the next phylum it is platyhelminthes platyhelminthes one important question is there that is the specialized excretory cells called flame cells help in osmoregulation and excretion for platyhelminthes so the question is question number 31 what are what is flame cells okay so it is one of this specialized to excrete the cell found in this phylum platyhelminthes which is helping for osmoregulation as well as for excretion understand then come to the soft three lines one point is given this is this platyhelminthes uh, uh, organism is going through the larval stage the life cycle consists of the larval stage so it is passing through various larval stages the first larval stage they said mirasidium next sporocyst then radia then cercaria so these are the larval stages it is passing through okay underline this okay then one more point we can mark there there is planaria it is one of this uh, example for this phylum platyhelminthes it uh, shows high regeneration capacity that also underline planaria okay
and the next one is phylum Ascalmindus. So Ascalmindus is previously called Nematoda, right? And here one of this character we can see it is it consists of this body, the unsegmented body which is covered by this and uh, transparent protrudic covering cover called it is cuticle. So the body is covered by the transparent membrane called cuticle underline. Then here this excretory cell is renal glands. Can you notice renal glands? Okay, underline it. Okay, then come to phylum Annelida. So, this is commonly called segmented worms, right? Okay, phylum Annelida. Here one question is there, that is, what is hydrostatic skeleton? So, there is a coelom with the coelomic fluid creates a hydrostatic skeleton and aids in locomotion. So, the coelom is there, the coelom is filled with the coelomic fluid. So, inside it is forming one hydro hy hydrostatic uh, environment. So, that's, they say, it is a hydrostatic skeleton which is helping for locomotion also. Okay, then again they said of course since it is a one segmented worm, they said metamerism is there. So this definition already we have seen also, right? Okay, then one of this example they said aquatic uh, annelid like Neris, it has this appendages, lateral appendages called parapodia. This is helping for swimming. So this is a locomotory organ for Neris, underline parapodia, right? And the next question we can see here, it is in the fourth line, the respiratory pigments. So, our respiratory pigment is hemoglobin, it, it is used to transport oxygen, right? The same hemo, here this respiratory pigments are hemoglobin as well as chlorochlorine. Hemoglobin and chlorochlorine, underlined, it's an important question, okay? Then come to the last, the larva of this phylum is called trochophore larva. Clear? Okay. Come to the next phylum, phylum arthropoda. Okay, so first line even they said this is the largest phylum of this kingdom Animalia. So kingdom animal among all the phylums, this is the largest phylum. Understand, the vast variety of animals are there. And this consists of one, one of the class, it is called Insecta. So this is the largest class among the, all the classes. Okay, and even they said 2 to 10 millions of species is there in this class. Okay, so this phylum Arthropoda. And here they one question, they said it is molting or ecdysis. So which means the body consists of the exoskeleton. So this will be periodically removed. That is called it is a molting or ecdysis. Can you notice? Markets. Molting or ecdysis. Start from the first line. Okay. And come to the next one here. The respiratory organs. After the two line. The respiratory organs are gills, book gills, book lungs or trachea. These are the respiratory organs. Come to the sense organs. Next line. Sense organs like antenna, eye and the statocyst. See, it is one of the new one. Statocyst is useful for balancing the body. Equilibrium. Okay. So, mark it. Then the next point. Excretion, excretory organs. The excretory organs are malfeasant tubules, green glands as well as the coxal glands. Mark it. Right. So, these are the questions. And finally, one point is given about the metam metamorphosis. So, this life cycle of this arthropod animals are called metamorphosis because it is passing through the various stages. So, this life history is called metamorphosis. Right? Okay. Then come to the next phylum, mollusca. So, mollusca first line they said it is the second largest phy animal phylum. Second largest animal phylum. Right? Underline. Then about the body divisions, they said, body parts. Here the body is divided as a three regions, head region, muscular food as well as a visceral gum or visceral mass. Okay. And this cover on this visceral gum is called mantle. And the space between this, within this mantle is called mantle cavity. Okay. And this mantle cavity consists of number of further like structure called tinidia that you mark. Tinidia. This is useful for respiratory function. Got it? Under. And the next point here, the radula, the mouth cons consists of the rasping organ called radula, mark it, okay. And the next point, osperidium, after one line, it is an important one. The sense organs are tentacles, eyes and osperidium. This is, osperidium is useful to check the purity of the water, mark it, underline, okay. Then, come to the same paragraph, last two lines, the blood contains this uh, pigments called hemocyanin, or uh, it is a copper containing respiratory pigments, hemocyanin, mark it. Okay, and the last line, larva name is Williger larva, Williger larva. Okay, then come to this phylum Echinodermata. So, Echinodermata, one of the question, one of the special character they said, it consists of the water vascular system or this is the ampullacral system, ampullacral system like canal system. Okay, and this consists, what are the function of this one, which helps in, underline, locomotion and capture and transportation of food as well as for respiration. Understand? Okay. 
Then the next one, the last paragraph, they said, the echinoderms exhibit autonomy with a remarkable power of regeneration. So, remarkable regeneration capacity is there for these organisms. Okay. And come to this hemicardata. Hemicardata is commonly called as acan worms or tongue worms. Example, we can say it's a balanoglasses. Acan worms, common name is acan worm or tongue worm. Okay. Then here we can say this excretory organ is proboscis gland or glomerulus. Okay. And see the last line, ternary larva is this larva of this phylum. Okay, then we can go for this chordata. So, chordata, all chordates possess three fundamental distinct features at some stages. So, this is one of the very important five mark question you have to mark. Clear? So, listen, three important characters given here, one by one point. The first one is notochord, second one is nerve cord and the third one is pharyngeal gill slits. So, this, this location also already mentioned here in this diagram. So, diagram is must and mark this question from the first line to the last point and this is one of the five mark question, right? Okay, then the next one is the tabular column, comparison of the chordates and non chordates This tabular column also learn as a 5 mark question. Okay, and so now we can see this subphylums of this phylum chordata. The three subphylum is there. First one, urochordata, cephalo one, second one, cephalochordata, third one, vertebrata. Among that first one is cephalochordata, urochordata. Here this is commonly called squids, underline squids. And this consists of the body cavity or body covering, it is called tunic, underline tunic. Okay. Here one of the important character we can say notochord is present only in the tail region of this larval stage hence named as urochordata. So the notochord is present only in the tail region and only in the larval stage. Okay. And finally we one point is given it is it consists of the character retrogressive metamorphosis is seen. Retrogressive metamorphosis means the reverse process which means the larva only consists of the notochord but when it becomes a matured animal this notochord may disappear that's why they said it's a reverse growth so that's why they said a retrogradu retrogressive metamorphosis okay mark it then you come to the cephalo cephalocardita cephalocard cephalo means head okay so that's why they said the notochord is present in the head region for this organism so example amphiaxis we can say so it will be asked so five mark question also okay then come to the cephalo vertebrata right vertebrata so, Saphila vertebrata is classified as Agnatha as well as Anastostomata. This is a recent class. In the last class, we have conducted this topic only. So, Agnatha and Anastostomata. So, what is Agnatha and Anastostomata? Jaw, jawless vertebrates as well as his jawed vertebrates. So, that differentiation you mark from the second paragraph to this. Fully you can mark because this is an important question. So, book pack question also there in this paragraph. They ask the differentiation between Agnatha as well as Ostritis. So, here you can mark differentiation between Agnatha and Anastostomata first of all. Okay, then you can mark this and this class of this agnatha it is cyclostomata underline. Okay, then nathostomata is again classified as pieces as well as a tetrapods. Then pieces are again classified as a cartilaginous as well as this bony fishes. So this table is given clearly given in the previous previous class. Okay, that also you can go through. So now in the book pack question question number thirty five they asked to differentiate agnatha as well as this ostitis. Okay, so this. Paragraph fully you can mark as the divisions. Then the first class it is cyclostomata. Okay, cyclostomata. So here one important point we can mark this is anadromous migration. So cy uh, cyclostomes are marine, but it is moving towards this freshwater for spawning, laying eggs. So that is called anadromous migration. And the larva is amosic larva. Right? And come to the next class, it is uh, chondritis. So this is the classes of vertebrates. Are you following me? Okay. Chondritis. So here the scales are placoid scales as well as, well as a heterocircle scales. Okay. And the gills are lamelliform gills. Underline. Then uh, kidney type is mesonephric kidney. Then it is ureotelic animals. Okay. So these are the important points we can mark for this class. And the next one, ostritis, bony fishes. Here one of the question is there is skin is covered by the ganoid, cycloid and a tenoid scales. It's a question number 36 mark it. They ask the three character of this ostritis. Okay. Question number 36. Then it consists of air bladder. Air bladder is useful for gas exchange as well as for maintaining buoyancy. So this is question number 37. Okay, mark it. Then the next one. So the next one is amphibians. The respiratory organs of amphibians are gills, lungs as well as through skins. Okay, then it goes for this hibernation as well as for estuation. Then the next class is Reptalia. So Reptalia, one of the character question they ask, question number 38. What are the character of this Reptalia is suitable to survive on the uh, on this terrestrial okay so here you can go through and any three points you can write everything is suitable for to survive on the earth okay so that you can mark so reptiles have three chambered heart also you can mark 
okay clear dk so whatever three points you can write from this clear And the class, next class is Yaves. He is here one of the important questions they ask. The endoskeleton is fully ossified, bony, and the long bones are hollow with the air cavities, pneumatic bones. Okay, this is question number 39. And what is the speciality of this endoskeleton of this Yaves? Okay, or birds, there is a pneumatic bones. It says air filled cavities will be there, right? Question number 39. Another one, next line, the pectoral, is muscles, uh, the pectoral muscles of flight. So, flight muscles of pectoral is major as well as the pectoral is minus. This also will be asked as a two mark question. That also you can mark. Clear? Okay. Next one, and the eggs are megalocytal type as well as it is uh, cladoic type. Okay, clear? The next one is their body is covered by the class mammalia. So two unique characters they said for this mammalia. One is the body cover, body is covered by the hair. The second one is presence of this mammary glands. So this is the unique nature of this mammalia. Underline. Okay. Then the skin consists of the glands. That is a sweat gland, center gland as well as a sebaceous gland. Okay. So this is also the unique character of this and mammals. So now we can. So next we can see the evaluation questions. The first question, choose the correct answer. The symmetry exhibited in radians is radial symmetry. And sea anemone belongs to phylum is and cylantrata. The excreted cells that are found in the platyhelminthes are flame cells. In which of the following organisms self-fertilization is in earthworm? Nephridia of earthworms are performed by performing the same function as flame cells of planaria. Which of the following animal has a true zealum? Fretima. Metameric segmentation is seen in this features of Annelida. The Fretima locomotion occurs with the help of the circular longitudinal muscles of A and CT. Which of the following have the highest number of species in nature? Insect. Which of the following is in crustacean? Prawn. The respiratory pigment in cockroach is hemocyanin. Exoskeleton of which phylum consists of chitinous cuticle arthropoda? Lateral line sense organ is occur in fish. The limbless amphibian is Ethiopis. Fourth chamber heart is present in crocodile. Which of the following is not correctly paired? Whale and amenotelic. Which of the following is an egg-laying mammal? Ornithorhynchus. Then, pneumatic bones are seen in apes. Match the following column and select this correct pair. That is option B. And which of the following phyla? The adult shows in radial symmetry, but the larva shows us bilateral symmetry, echinodermata. Which of the following is correctly matched? Faisalia, Portuguese man of war. Okay, so till here, this is choose the correct answer. Question number 22 and the 23 already we have marked inside the text. Okay. And next one is, uh, next to question number 24, 25, 26, 27 already we have marked. And question number 28, observe this animal below and answer the following questions. The first one, identify the animal. It is Adamsia. What type of symmetry does this animal exhibit? Radial symmetry. In this animal, cephalized? No. How many germ layer does this animal have? Two ectoderm as well as endoderm. How many openings does this animal digestive system have? One. That is called hypostome. Okay. Does this animal have neurons? It is. It consists of nerve net. Okay. Then choose the term that does not belong in the following group and explain why it does not belong. It's a question number 29. So some character is given there. Notochord, cephalization, dorsal nerve cord and radial symmetry. So this is radial symmetry because all other characters are present in the cord. But radial symmetry is not there. It is bilateral symmetry. Okay. And why flatworms are called acelamates? Because if there is absence of the seal, so it is called it is acelamates. Okay. Then what are flame cells already become marked? Then this concept map also, it is regarding this roundworm they asked so that we can learn around the roundworm fully, you can learn there. Then the question number 33, in which phyla is a larva trochophore is found? Analida. And next question, which of the chorded characteristics and tunicates do tunicates retain as an adult? That is urochordates. Then question number 35 already we marked or number 36 also we marked. 37 we marked, that is 8 we marked. 39 also we marked. Okay. Then question number 40. Could the number of eggs or young ones produced by an oviparous and viviparous female be equal? Why? The question is, oviparous also laying the egg and the viviparous also producing the egg. Whether the number is equal? Why? The answer is no. The number is not equal. Why? Because in viviparous animals, young ones are developed inside the female body. Viviparous. And 
one or few eggs are produced per every cycle per cycle that's why it is very less in number understand okay so listen here i made on tabular column that is phylum and larva so throughout this lesson we have learned many larva names right so you may get confusion that's why i made it as a tabular column one side phylum names are there another side larval names names are there so whatever larval name they have given in the text too i have noticed here but it doesn't mean there is no larva for other phylums which is not mentioned here understand so whatever is mentioned i have mentioned here okay so porifera larva name is parenchymula ampiplastula nidaria planula larva and tinafora sidip larva plat helminthes mirasidium radia and sporocyst and cercaria larva annelida trochophore larva mollusca veliger larva hemichordata ternaria larva eurocordata tadpole larva and cyclostomata amosite larva okay so pass this pause the video and write down this one and paste it behind this and you know, evaluation page okay this will help you to learn so hope you understood everything and it may it may help you to learn thoroughly and please learn the questions don't waste the time and we can meet in the next class okay fine thank you